In this video, I'm going to be demonstrating the washer method, doing a little explanation about where it comes from, and then how you go about using it. Hopefully at this point um, in your calculus studies, you are already familiar with the disk method because the washer method basically is just an extension of the disk method. All right, in this picture right here, all right, I'm demonstrating your scenario or setup for your representative rectangle. All right, if this is your axis of revolution and it's horizontal and your representative rectangle then is perpendicular to the axis of revolution, but it's not touching it, then when we go to revolve this around, it's going to form a washer shape. So over here, that representative rectangle is right there. And as you can see, as it is rotated or revolved around, all right, we form a washer because it has that hole right there in the center. All right, now basically, what we did with the disk method was we integrated um, pi times the integral of a to b, and we did it with the radius squared or the distance that was from that axis of revolution all the way up the top. Well, with this washer method having a little gap here, we're going to have to involve some subtraction here. Okay, so a lot of formulas will consider this to be the outside radius, and what they're talking about, the outside radius, is the outside radius of that entire disk. All right, so if I had the outside radius, if I had this distance from here to here, and I subtracted the distance from here to here, which would be the inside radius, here's my inside radius of that disk, all right, because if I had the, the area of the whole thing minus the area of the little thing, then I would have what's left over there, okay? So now we are doing volume, I said area, just in general, okay, is what I was trying to get at there. So I'm going to not necessarily use... Um, outside radius and inside radius, I'm going to use top curve and bottom curve in my formulas, and you'll see that here in just a little bit. Okay, but visualizing that your representative rectangle is perpendicular to your axis of revolution and not touching it, that's when this washer is formed. All right, now if we take a look at a couple different scenarios and what the um, formulas would look like. In this first example on this left hand side, I've got two curves, an f of x and a g of x. All right, In between the two um, curves there is my area that I'm going to be revolving and then that would make my axis or my um, representative rectangle perpendicular to my axis of revolution and in this picture hopefully you can see revolving around there's that little gap right in there that the disk is being formed because of that space right there okay so generically the formula could be written pi times the integral from a to b of f of x squared minus g of x squared dx everything's in terms of x all right but here again that's assuming the first curve is um, an F named F in the second curve, the bottom curve there is G of X. So that's why generically I usually tell my students top curve squared minus bottom curve squared. All right, but here again, depending on your textbook, depending on the professor, this could be, this would be the outside radius squared minus the inside radius squared. All right, now in this scenario over here, I'm revolving around the Y axis. And the equations are in terms of y. That means that representative rectangle would be drawn horizontally, and we'd be revolving this way. This picture shows the disk that would be formed there. I mean, washer with the hole in the middle. Okay, revolving that around, I would get my washer right there. And we don't have a top curve or bottom curve anymore. So now you're going to have to think of this as the right curve minus the left curve. Okay, so um, again, the formula would be pi times the integral from a to b of f of y squared minus g of y squared dy, because everything's in terms of y, all right, or generically the right curve squared minus the left curve squared. And here again, if you've got someone that's using outside and inside dim, uh, dot radiuses, it would be the outside radius squared minus the inside radius squared. All right, so um, just kind of set up visual on what they're going to look like, what how your washer is going to look when it's formed as it's being <clears throat> revolved around either one of those axes. Okay, so we'll work through two examples, one straightforward one, and then one where we have to change our equations. All right, so in this first one right here, let's say that they're asking us to find the volume of the solid generated by revolving the region bounded 
by y equals x squared plus 2 and y equals x plus 4 about the x-axis. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a rough sketch so that we can visualize and see what we're working with here. Okay, so upright parabola and line, so we probably only need first and second quadrants here. We'll make our picture kind of big. That would be good enough there. Okay, so upright parabola shifted up to A really rough sketch there. Y equals x squared plus 2. Alright, and slope of 1 up 4 on this line. So it goes through there and maybe has a slope of 1. So let's just generically say right there. Y equals x plus 4. Okay, so the region that I will be revolving around that x-axis right there is inside. Right in here. All right, first off, I know I'm going to need to locate those two points of intersection because I'm going to need to run this along my x-axis from A to B. All right, so I've got to find those intersection points. So finding those intersection points, you're going to set the two curves equal to each other. So points of intersection. So I'm going to take the x squared plus 2 and set that equal to the x plus 4. Alright, looks like I've got going to have a nice little parabola here. If I move everything to the left, I have an x squared minus an x minus a 2. This is going to factor pretty easy into an x plus 1 and an x minus 2. Alright, so that's giving me an x equals negative 1 and an x equals 2. Alright, so this intersection point is negative 1, this intersection point is 2. Alright, um, now let's see, let's make sure we're going to have washer method here involved. I'm revolving around the x-axis, there's my region. If I make my representative rectangle perpendicular to that axis of revolution, that would be my delta x right there. When I revolve that around, there's that gap right there. So you can clearly see that that would be the washer that would be formed when I do this. So now I can go ahead and set up my washer formula here. Um, let's generically um, do it without plugging anything in first. Alright, so the volume would be pi times the integral from a to b. Alright, now I'm going to use top curve and bottom curve here. So top curve squared minus bottom curve squared and then dx because everything is in terms of x okay but like I said depending on your professor this could be outside uh, radius squared minus inside radius squared okay so my top curve is my line so that's going to be the x plus 4 so replacing here my values pi times the integral of negative 1 to 2 top curve x plus 4 quantity squared minus that bottom curve the bottom curve is the parabola so x squared plus 2 squared and then dx okay now at this point um, I'm not going to work out the integration here because if you're doing washer method and volume method and calculus you know how to do the integration foil that out you can do it longhand you can also use um, your calculator as well and get that answer um, if you would want to stop and work it out by hand to see if you get the right answer, I believe it's a 162 over 5 pi when left in terms of pi. So if you uh, do have to work it out by hand, I'd probably pause the video, work it out, and see if I could come up with that. Um, otherwise, then you should be good here because the main thing is, can you plug everything into the washer formula correctly? All right, can you find those points of intersection, and can you determine that, yes, by sure, it is a washer method problem? Okay. All right, now let's do a second example. All right, the second example will be a little more involved um, because of what we're going to revolve around. So in this example, it says, find the volume of the solid formed by revolving the region bounded by the graphs of y equals square root of x minus 1 and y equals x minus 1 quantity squared about the y-axis. Okay, so again... Um, these equations are in terms of x, but I'm going around the y-axis. 
okay? So that means I'm probably going to need to, if I plan on using washer, I'm going to need to convert these into equations in terms of y. But let's start with our sketch. First, let's see, okay, square root and parabola here. It's going to still be in the first quadrant primarily. Okay, so square root function, this one's going to be shifted one to the right. And square root is up to the right. Let's just do that for a y equals square root of x minus one. This will be a parabola. It's going to also be shifted one to the right, upright parabola. All right, I'm not really concerned with this part of it. We'll go ahead and put it on there just so you can see it is a parabola with a vertex at one. And there is the y equals x minus one quantity squared. Okay, so my region that's bounded by those two curves are right in there and I'm revolving around the y axis. All right, so if I need to use, if, it's, if I'm intending to use washer here, this is my axis of revolution. That means my representative rectangle would have to be perpendicular to that y-axis. So that representative rectangle would be right there, and it would be a delta y. All right, I know my intersection point here is at zero. I need to find this intersection point on the y-axis. So I, again, have to find... Um, intersection points, but I cannot right now, I cannot set these two curves equal to each other because if I set these two curves equal to each other, I would be finding the value of x, so I would be finding this point down here. So the very first thing I need to do is take these two equations and rewrite them in terms of y. So I think I'll do that in blue. So let's write that down here. Let's rewrite equations in terms of y. All right, so um, let's just take this top parabola right here. y equals x minus 1 quantity squared. All right, so let's take the square root of both sides to get rid of that 2. So I'd have square root of y equals x minus 1. I can add 1 to both sides. So square root of y plus 1 equals x. All right, so the parabola, when rewritten in terms of y, is this equation right here. And then let's do the second one, y equals square root of x minus 1. All right, since I've got a square root right there, let's square both sides of the equation to get rid of that. So then I have a y squared equals x minus 1. And again, add 1 to both sides. So y squared plus 1 equals x. All right, so there is the square root function rewritten in terms of y. Okay, so now I have these rewritten in terms of y. So to find that intersection point on the y-axis, I can set these two equations equal to each other and then solve for y. So let's do that right here. Points of intersection. I'm going to abbreviate right there. Okay, so setting those two equations equal to each other. Square root of y plus 1 equals y squared plus 1. All right, let's go ahead and subtract 1 from both sides of the equation. That will make those go away. Square root of y equals y squared. Um, if I square both sides, I can get rid of that square root. So there we go, squaring both sides. That will give me a y equals y to the fourth. I move the y over here, I can factor and solve this equation pretty simply here. So 0 equals y to the fourth minus y. Factor out a y. That'll leave me a y third minus 1. Okay, so from here I can set each term equal to 0. Um, so right there, that's just going to give me a y equals 0. If I do this one, add 1 to both sides, and then take the cube root, I will get y equals 1. Okay, so the two intersection points here on the y-axis, this one is 0, and this one is 1. Okay, so now I am ready to use my volume formula for washer method and set this up. So we'll do this um, generically first, 
and then plug in the things we need. So our volume is going to be equal to pi times the integral from a to b. And then here again, since we're revolving around that y-axis, I don't have a top and a bottom curve, but I have a right curve and a left curve. So this would be my right curve squared minus my left curve squared. And then because everything's in terms of y now, it'll be a dy. Okay, and here again, if they're not using right and left, this would be your outside radius squared minus your inside radius squared. Okay, so let's fill this in then with what we need. We need pi times the integral of 0 to 1. My right curve is the parabola, but i got to remember and do it in terms of y here. So square root of y plus 1, quantity squared, minus my left curve. The left curve is the square root curve. Rewritten is the y squared plus 1, quantity squared, and then dy. And again, at this point, you know, I assume that you can integrate pretty good. You do some foiling, a lot of algebra there. You could crank that out by hand. If you um, were not going to do it by hand, you could do it on the calculator. Either way, you can pause the video, check, see if you can get 29 over 30 pi when, answer, when the answer is left in terms of pi. All right, so just a real quick example of washer method, a little bit where the formula comes from, and two examples. Definitely thanks for watching. Uh, be sure and give me a thumbs up and share with your friends. Thanks.